chapter three is about displaying and describing categorical data. In this lesson, we're going to cover these four topics. To begin with a review, categorical data is data that falls into categories such as yes or no, male or female, small, medium, large, what grade did you get, A, B, C, D, or F, categorical data only. So the first rule of data analysis is make a picture. The second rule is make a picture. And the third rule is, you guessed it, make a picture. So how do we make pictures? With graphs. So a distribution displays the possible values of a variable and how often it takes them. Depending on the type of data and what you are looking for, there are a number of ways to organize and display the distribution. When a variable is categorical, the first step is usually to construct a frequency table, which displays the possible categories and the number of observations in each category. That's what we're looking at here is a frequency table. This frequency table can also be called a two-way table because you have variables coming from each direction. You have variables here, and then you have more variables here. So it's a two-way table. Um, this particular two-way table is a frequency table because you've got the frequency of a particular response in the table, in the cells in the table. And then we can take that information, make it into a graph like the one you see here. We could also take our frequency table and turn it into a relative frequency table. In a relative frequency table, you take each of your frequencies and you turn them into percentages or proportions. When you do that, it's important to note that the um, percentages cannot exceed 100%, except if you have minor rounding errors. Once your data has been organized into some sort of a frequency table, then you can graph it. And one way to graph it is to make bar charts, which you see on the left, or relative frequency bar charts, which you see on the right. One thing about bar charts, or all graphs, as far as that goes, is the area principle. The area principle says that the area occupied by a part of the graph should correspond to the magnitude of the value it represents. For example, when making a bar chart, like this one on the left, the rectangles should all be the same width, so only the height determines the area. So you should notice that the widths of all of these rectangles are the same. The horizontal axis should include the name and the possible categories. So the name of this is response, and then the categories are full response, partial response, and no response. So it looks like you have two labels here, but it's really not two labels. It's a variable name and categories. The bars need to have spaces between them. The space between them indicates that the bars are freestanding and can be rearranged into any order. The vertical axis can be frequency, like this one is, number of cases, or it can be relative frequency where it's been turned into percentages. In either case, you have to have a numbering scale and it has to start at zero. Some software programs make it difficult for you to start your graph at zero. They like to break it off at more convenient numbers, but you don't want that to happen. It always needs to start at zero. Relative frequency bar charts make it easier to compare multiple distributions, especially when you have different sample sizes. So when we're talking about these responses, we had, um, we had different numbers of people that took the different types of medication, and so it would be easier to compare if you turn them into percentages. So what's wrong with this graph? Well, what's wrong with this graph is that it violates the area principle. The widths of the bar should all be the same, so that the height of the bar is the only thing that determines 
um, the frequency of the item. Okay, last on this segment, we have pie charts. Pie charts are useful when comparing categories that form parts of the whole. Categories must not overlap. Each subject can only be in one category. So either um, you took St. John's wort or Zoloft or placebo, you could not take all three drugs or any two combination. You can only take one drug. Um, you should label the variables like we have done here and you should label the categories. So you've got your title at the top, you've got your label on each pie segment. If we wanted to compare the distribution, um, compare the distribution of response for St. John's wort, Zoloft, and placebo, we want to compare all of them at once. We can use multiple pie charts or we can use a comparative bar chart. Also, um, which we will worry about later.